very tough tigers to to rewelcome uh, Lorij Boyer to another another of his sort of destinations northeast um, avian and wildlife of the northeast and he's going to take us on a little journey to various different destinations that he's enjoyed and which people can also enjoy as well so delighted to have Lorij he's got extraordinary insight into many of these northeastern areas um, and of course a lot had many many years in India um, in Ladakh running camps um, and across other parts of, of India so Lorij delighted to welcome you again part two I, I think we could say I don't know if there's a part three in you somewhere as well but okay. let's let's um, let's enjoy uh, as you go forward so thank you very much for being with us Thanks, Julian, and thanks, Pitu, for having me so, for, for a second time. I guess uh, I was not that boring in the first, uh, first part for you to, to welcome me again another time. So for the people who are not here in the part one, I will just give a quick uh, summary about, about the Northeast in general, and then we'll, uh, we'll dive directly in the, in the second part. So in a few words, uh, the Northeast is quite based. It's, 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 um, it's packed between uh, Bhutan, uh, Bangladesh on the south, Burma and, and Tibet on the north. So it's one of the 10 most important biodiversity uh, hotspots in the world. Actually, it's two biodiversity hotspots. One is the Himalayan on the north and one will be uh, the Indo-Burma on the south southeast. It has most uh, around 37 national parks uh, and 137 wildlife sanctuaries. It has more than 150 uh, species of birds, uh, which is like more than two thirds of the bird species you will find in India. And among them, there will be 50 globally threatened and near the 13 near threatened species. It is completely out of the beaten tracks from, uh, from, uh, from tourism. I was telling Julian, uh, even the, the mainstream, you can say mainstream national parks like Kaziranga, if you avoid the weekends, you will be completely alone in the national parks. Nameri also, sometimes you can walk alone in the park. Um, Ulongapa also, there's all the, the main name you will hear about, about the Northeast. In, in some, sometimes it's completely, uh, completely, um, completely empty. So I was showing, I was talking just before about the, the biodiversity hotspot. Here you guys will see all of them. But what is uh, interesting for us is this one, the, the Himalayan one on the north, and, and the big uh, purple one in the middle, which is Indo-Burma. So you can see the northeast is just sitting on both this biodiversity hotspot. Uh, so the diversity of wildlife and of uh, avifauna is incredible. So I was telling you, it's just tucked between Bhutan, Bangladesh, uh, Tibet on the north and Burma. It's a completely east part of, uh, of India. And these are the states uh, that we are going to talk about today. So in the first part, we have uh, discussed about Assam and Arunachal Pradesh, which is maybe the biggest uh, and thickest part for birders. Like most of the people will come to these two parts. And today we are going to discuss about the, the other states which are less known, but not less, least interesting in terms of, of uh, birding and wildlife. And some states have some endemic species. So birder, birders will come especially to see one or two species in these states. So to, num, to name those states, uh, there is Meghalaya, where I'm actually residing since five years. Nagaland, which capital is, uh, is Kohima, quite famous for his, uh, his Hornville Festival. Manipur, which capital is Imphal, uh, which is a Hindu state and very interesting in terms of, uh, of culture. Uh, then you have Mizoram, which capital is Aizol. Uh, it's um, a tribal and a, a Christian state. Uh, I will not talk about Tripura this time because uh, all the birds species you can find in Tripura, you will also find them in the other states. And if I have time, or if uh, Julian, uh, Julian allow me uh, another one, I can do uh, a third session about uh, the foothills of West Bengal and Sikkim because they are quite close and, and they can be combined. Uh, so let's see uh, how long we're gonna, we're gonna do it. I'm just gonna go directly now to 
my slide. So last uh, time I stopped uh, in uh, Roing and Mayodia Pass and all the Mishmi Hills. So I will just uh, do one last slide about Namdapa National Park because it's, it's, a, it's a very good birding uh, spot and uh, we didn't have time to cover it last time. So it will allow me to, to complete it. So you can see in terms of landscape, it's, it's, it's beautiful. You feel like you're in some Jurassic, Jurassic Park movie. And also Namdapa is one of the only places in the world hosting the four big cats. So the Bengal tiger, the leopard, the cloudy leopard, and the snow leopard, which is quite incredible. These four uh, big cats are sharing the same ecosystem. So of course, it's extremely rare and the, the, the chances are very slim to, to see those cats because the portion which is visited in Namdapa, which is quite a big sanctuary, is, is tiny compared to the, the entire space of the, uh, of the national park. And just to give you an example, if you want to go to Vijayanagar, which is one of the most remote village in, uh, in situated in the border of the park, it will take you seven days by walk to reach this place. So seven days to go, seven days to come back. Or if you are lucky, you can get a ride back by the army chopper uh, from Vijayanagar to uh, maybe Divoga. So in terms of birding, there are some very uh, beautiful key species which are very difficult to see or even sometimes impossible to see uh, all, uh, in, some, in, in, in the rest of India. Uh, Namdapa has 400 species of bird, so it's, it's, uh, it's incredible. You can only find some species uh, like the white-bellied heron. Uh, it's on, on top right. Um, I think with Punaka in Bhutan, it's one of the two only uh, spots where you can have a, a chance to see this, uh, this beautiful bird. Uh, just to let you know, there are, according to the records, 250s left in the world. And out of them, 50 will be found in India. So one fifth of the total global population will be found in India. So here you can see him on the Nohadihing uh, River, which is the main river crossing uh, Namdapa National Park. Uh, the golden crested myna, very difficult to spot. You see it's beautiful um, crested, uh, slightly similar to the hill myna. Uh, and it's, it's quite difficult to spot because it's generally hiding among flocks of, uh, of hill myna. So when you see hill myna, always try to, uh, to, look, to look carefully because one golden crested myna might be uh, hiding uh, uh, nearby. So it's very close from, from Burma, uh, Namdapa National Park. So you have some species that you will find in both countries, but you will not find them in the rest of, uh, of India. Uh, among other species that you can find over there, the Blythe Spragopan is there, the Blue Naps Pita. Uh, people will come especially also to see the snowy throated babbler that you can see here at the bottom right. Beautiful parrot bills here on the picture, the letter Rufus headed parrot bill. Uh, Wart's dragon also is, is present, a beautiful nut hatch, uh, rufous neck hornbill. Uh, so the park cannot be uh, visited by, uh, by Jeep Safari. You have to cross the Nohading um, River and then you will trek uh, to the, to the, the, the core uh, area of the park. So you will camp in small tents with porters in beautiful places, there's the camps which are named like Hornbill Camp, where you will see Rufus Naked Hornbill quite easily. But of course you need to deserve it because you have to trek in thick forest for five, six hours, um, but it's totally worth it. Sometimes uh, elephants can carry your belongings. So you walk along with elephants. So it's, uh, it's an incredible uh, adventure. So after Arunachal, we're gonna go directly to Meghalaya. I have divided uh, the state in uh, two places because uh, the rest of, uh, of, of Meghalaya, you will find the, the species uh, in, uh, in, in the rest of Northeast, but in, especially in Cherapunji and uh, in Balpakram National Park, Sijunal National Park, uh, Bird Sanctuary, and also Nokrek uh, National Park, you can find some species uh, quite easily and that you won't find anywhere else. So Cherapunji first, it has a very uh, fragmented habitat because lots of uh, humans are living there. Uh, yet the avifauna uh, of the sacred groves are, is very diverse. 
So next to the villages in, uh, in the Cassie Hills, you will have a sacred grove. So before the, the, the Cassie were um, converted to Christianity, they were nature worshippers. And the forest had a very important part uh, in, uh, in their um, worshipping. So not, not a stone or not even a, a dead leaf could be carried. The, 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 the forest had to be uh, uh, completely intact from, from human uh, disturbance. So it has helped somehow to preserve many species. So here on the pictures, you can see Nokalikai waterfall, so which is one of the highest waterfall in, um, in India. And uh, this picture has been taken during monsoon. So if you want to do some birding and some, uh, some, some cultural or nat natural sightseeing, um, post monsoon is the best time. That's when the, the waterfall are, are, full, uh, are fully charged with water. So people will come um, in uh, Cherapunji, especially for two species, the dark rum swift, which can be actually seen uh, in the evening uh, near the Nokalika waterfall that you just saw just before. And uh, just before reaching uh, Cherapunji, there is one spot uh, quite famous for the tony breasted wren babbler, which is endemic. So this small bird on the top right will only be found uh, in Cherapunji area. Apart from this, uh, these birds, you can find 153 species of birds in Cherapunji area and around the sacred groves, including four threatened species. So the dark rum swift, which is here, the lesser crestel, the gray crowned prinia here uh, below right, the swamp francolin, three restricted range species, which is also the dark rum swift, the striped throated bowing, uh, and the tawny breasted wren babbler that I just uh, talked about. It's also a very good spot for flavescent bulbul and crested finch, finch bill. Now we go to the Garo Hills. Uh, Garo Hills, so it's on the western side uh, of Meghalaya. It's quite uh, uh, undiscovered in terms of birding. There's still lots of, uh, of research, lots of um, naturalists and um, and scientists who are coming in this part to study butterfly and birds. There has been also some, some traces of red panda over there. So it's still a mystery to know if the red panda has really uh, been living in, uh, in Balpakram National Park or if the, the fur that has been found has been imported because we are very low, we are very close from the Bangladesh border. So it will be quite impossible for, for red panda to live uh, in such a, a hot climate. Uh, so, in terms of uh, accommodation, it's quite basic. Uh, there's only IBs and rest house over there. So, it, for people who have uh, only uh, who can put their comfort zone uh, uh, on the on the lower level. But if if you are a birder, you will be delighted by the different species you will find over there. Uh, you, this. Uh, two top pictures have been taken from the garden of the IB, the Inspection Bangalow of, uh, of Balpakram National Park. Uh, there is a big fig tree just behind, and you can see 20 different species of bird uh, during the season. So this is, is taken in March. So at this time of the year, you will see different species of birds, different species of green pigeon, the beautiful Asian fairy bluebird here on the left, male, female, like uh, collecting the figs. Um, and it's mating season also, so the birds are, are very loud. It's also a very good place for olive bulbul. Uh, I was telling just before the crested uh, finch bill, bottom right here. Uh, the eyebrowed wren babbler, dusky wabbler, uh, eastern crown wabbler, both are uh, winter visitors. And uh, it's also uh, some tracks of white winged duck there's been some, uh, some evidence uh, proof that it was also uh, uh, visiting the swamps of, um, of the sanctuary of the national park. And it's also the only Indian record of the chestnut front or trilling shrike babbler, which has been a uh, 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 specimen has been collected by Coles in the Garoils in 1954. Otherwise, this bird is only found on Java Island. So God knows how he got himself found in <laughs> In, uh, in, uh, in Meghalaya in 1954. So now we are done with, uh, with Meghalaya. We're going to go to Nagaland. 
So I will focus on two uh, places in uh, Nagaland. One is uh, the, the Tragopan Wildlife Sanctuary in Nyakonoma, which is about 20 kilometers from uh, the capital, Kohima. And the second part will be the Doyang Reservoir, uh, very famous for the, the migration of the Amur Falcon. So this is Konoma village here on the left. You can see some beautiful paddy field. And Konoma is renowned for its effort to conserve the biodiversity of the surrounding forest uh, with the local Angami community. In, uh, in um, Nagaland, you have 16 recognized tribes with lots of sub-tribes. And the Angami community is one of the biggest community in, uh, in Nagaland. So this community has decided in 1998 uh, to establish the Konoma Nature Conservation and Fragopan Sanctuary that encompasses 25 square kilometers between their village and another village called Zuleke. So together, they have self-imposed a ban on hunting. So all the villagers have surrendered their guns. And now the, the birds are protecting in the area. So of course, uh, it is famous for the Tragopan as the name of the, of the sanctuary. But there are also many other species and, uh, and key species that you can find in this area. So the, the sanctuary is between these two villages and also Zuku Valley, which is very famous for trekking. It's a beautiful um, valley with dwarf bamboo. Uh, if, you, if you can trek to this valley, it takes about four or five hours. And when you arrive there, you feel like you're in the Lord of the Ring. It's, it's completely surreal. So this, this part of, uh, of, uh, of India gets snow in winter, at least it gets frozen. And this Zuku Valley is half in uh, Nagaland and half in Manipur. So you can see some beautiful species here uh, and, and super species like the mountain bamboo partridge, uh, which is quite a skull curve, very difficult to, to spot because it freezes at any movement. And if you get closer, it, it will spot too much before. And as soon as you get closer, it will fly off and, um, and land some in some other part of the of the valley, so it's quite difficult to, to see. But there are also Nagaran babbler, which is endemic here on the bottom right. It's called Nagaran babbler or long tail when babbler. Chestnut vented nut hatch, and uh, many different species of laughing thrush. Here you can see the Assam laughing thrush, but there's also the moustache, the stripped, uh, the brown cap laughing thrush. Uh, other thrushes also, you can find the black breasted thrush. Some simtar babbler, like the spot breasted simtar babbler, uh, sibia, gray sibia also, uh, crested finch also is quite uh, quite common over there, striated prinia, rusty capped fulveta, and some parakeets, the gray headed parakeet, and of course the blight fragopan, which is a state bird, but very slim chance to, to see it. Now we go to Pongti Valley and you can see here on the picture the beautiful uh, Doyang Reservoir. So it's a man-made uh, reservoir with the dam. And it's the greatest, uh, you can here witness the greatest raptors migration uh, of the Amur Falcon. So the, the, the Amur Falcon is a, is a super bird because it will travel 2,400 miles from the East Asia. So you can see East China and Mongolia. Uh, where it's breeding to South Africa, where it's wintering. So it will rest and roost in, uh, in Doyang um, Reservoir and feed before uh, this, the daring crossing of the Indian Ocean. The funny fact is that it's, uh, it, it, it's not uh, eating meat and it's not going to chase like uh, rodents like the rest of the, um, uh, of the raptors. This one is uh, feeding on termites. Uh, it's sinking its uh, presence in the reservoir with the, um, the nuptial flight of the termites, the flying termites, and it will, which are full of proteins and nutrients necessary for the, for the migration of the bird. And it's also a beautiful conservation effort uh, because this, uh, in, in a remote village, uh, so in this Woka district, Pongti received uh, global attention in uh, 2012. Uh, thanks to the journalist Bano Faralu, with a female journalist turned conservationist, who witnessed and reported the killing of thousands of Amur falcon 
during their annual migration. This highlighted not only the tragedy, but also the mere presence of such incredible numbers of these birds previously not widely known. It's, it's uh, lax and lax of birds. Uh, sometimes the sky can get dark because of, of this bird roosting uh, all around the, 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 Do, the Doyong Reservoir. So after alerted local authorities and getting some in national and international help, and also coordinating with the local uh, organization, they've been able to work together with the village councils on the importance of conservation because before they were of course hunted for their meat. So villagers will raise some nets in the morning and the evening and they will kill lakhs of these, uh, of these birds. So now this, all these um, hunters have been turned into uh, helpers and guides to um, help uh, the preservation and of this bird. So now it's completely a hunting free zone and the major, it's a major victory in the state, which is still dominated by tribal communities where hunting is a tradition. And uh, now it's, it's, uh, it's a very good example for the rest of Nagaland uh, in terms of preservation. So here you can see the Amo falcon uh, roosting. And so it's happening in uh, November. The you can say in the first week of November. You can also see these birds in uh, Assam and even in Meghalaya, there is some roosting sites, but the biggest um, uh, place, the place where you can see the largest gathering of birds will definitely be this uh, Pongti Valley. And also uh, it's a good combination with the Toku Emong Festival of the Woka tribe over there. So you can do a little bit of birding and you can also drive to Woka to witness the beautiful uh, tribal festival, which is of, of course less known and uh, less touristic than, than the Hornbill festival. Apart from the Amo Falcon, there's also uh, good places uh, for, for other raptors and also for Lothing Trush and, uh, and Pita. Now let's jump to Mizoram. Uh, Mizoram, there are three main uh, bird spots. I will focus on the Dampa Tiger Reserve, which is at the border with Bangladesh. And also uh, two other places, the Selam Bird Sanctuary, which is a venue place, and the Fong Tui National Park. So the Dampa Tiger Reserve um, was once famous for the highest density of cladded leopard in the world. I don't know if it's still uh, relevant today, but it was the case uh, 10 years ago. And the forest of Mizoram's all many threatened animal species, including tiger, uh, the elephant, white elephants, cloudy leopard, gore, goral, huluk gibbon, stump tail macaque, binturong, fierce leaf monkey, and many others. But the area, area is also just, justly and as famous for its bird with some great rarities to be found here and only here. So you can see here some beautiful species of birds and primates. Dampa is quite famous for the white-cheeked partridge. If you have a good guide, you can uh, easily find it. Uh, knowing that the, the tiger reserve is uh, struggling against the palm oil uh, farming, which has been pushed by the government. So more and more, uh, the, 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 the Tiger Reserve is being infringed uh, by the locals uh, to grow uh, palm oil and betel, betel, uh, betel nut trees. It's also a very good spot for the gray slaty uh, woodpecker and the pale chin flycatcher. And you can see also on top, all right, this is the only place with Tripura and Bangladesh where you can see the fierce leaf monkey, which is a monkey which has adapted and is only feeding on leaves. Again, uh, the deforestation and the monoculture for, of, uh, for example, rubber tree is has a big incidence on, uh, on the population of the first leaf monkey. Um, apart from that, there's been some records also of blaze kingfisher, blue pita also, which is extremely rare in India, uh, a lot of lothing trush, moustached, stripped, rufous vented, brown calf and spot breasted, Olive and flavescent bulbul also in, is present in, uh, in Dampa. Oriental hobby, 
Wedge Bill Ren Babbler, and Purple Throated Sunbird. So now we go to Selam Bird Sanctuary. Uh, which is a very good uh, conservation uh, initiative also. The people of, of the village have uh, dedicated uh, their forest to conservation and they have even built some cottages for the people to, um, to, to come and enjoy the nature and especially for, for birders. So the, the sanctuary is very famous for the black eared shrike babbler that you can see here on top left. Uh, the sanctuary is 80 kilometers south of Aizol, the capital. So it's quite easy to just land in Aizol and then drive directly to Selam. Uh, very famous also for the white bellied air ponies. You can see here on top right. Uh, long tail broadbill, very loud bird and very easy to, to, to spot in, in spring because it makes a uh, lot of noise to find partners and, 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 gather to, and get together. And also the ray faced uh, Locicla. Uh, which is a, a cousin of the Bougounlo Cicla that we discussed about uh, last session when we were talking about uh, Eagle Nest. And finally, at the southern point of Mizoram, you have the Fongbui National Park. So as it is very close from Burma, there is some species that you will only find uh, in this area, at least in India. Uh, it's a good species for uh, the white broad piculate, the chin hill wren babbler that you can see here on top right, uh, some tree creepers, the manipur and humes tree creeper, uh, some babblers. And the gray crown babbler, uh, wobbler, you can see here at the bottom right. All three shrike babblers, uh, the crested uh, finchbill, also flavescent bulbul, and one mountain tailor, tailor bird. In uh, the family of the parrot bills, you can find the spot breasted uh, parrot bill, Nepal house martin, which is nesting on the cliffs, brown and roussette bush warbler, black throated prinia, uh, and also the Mount Victoria babax. There's been some records uh, in, uh, in Phong Puy. Uh, Usually, you only find it in the Victoria National Park in, in Burma. Now we're heading to Manipur. Uh, Manipur, so we're going to discuss uh, two different areas. Uh, the first area will be the Loktak Lake and uh, the adjacent Kebul Lamjao National Park. And then we'll head to Shiryu Valley. So here you can see a beautiful um, eye view of the Kebulam Jao, which is, uh, so the, here you can see the, the Loktak Lake, which is the largest freshwater lake in Northeast, and also the only floating national park in the world. So you can see the small islands made of, of vegetation, uh, which are sometimes inhabited. You can sometimes build habitation there, and there is a homestay on one, one of the islands. So it has been uh, in the local news recently um, in 2018 with the sp uh, spotting of the yellow-breasted bunting. It was the first uh, sighting uh, after 92 years. So it was quite encouraging to see that uh, some birds are coming after almost 100 years. They are also creating a sanctuary uh, in um, village and it will be one of the 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 national park Kebun Lamjao National Park is very famous for the bro antlered deer which is locally known as Songhai or dancing deer it's an endemic species to to Manipur beautiful also in the in, in the grass area around the around the lake the right broad laughing trash uh, also the slender bill babbler, and of course lots of uh, of ducks and geese are using are wintering inside the inside the lake. Uh, so you can see his beautiful white-eyed pochar, but you will also see the bear's pochar and more common species like the lesser whistling duck and and so on. You will also find some, of course, some kingfishers, pike kingfishers among the the most common one. Slender-billed babbler, striated grass bird, yellow bittern, 
Whitetail Stone Chat, Lesser Kukal, Burmese Strike, uh, Yellow Belly Prinia, Jardin Bouchat, to name only a few. In the Shiryu Valley, so which is the second part of, uh, of Manipur we're going to discuss, which is famous for the Shiryu lily, a flower, which is also endemic there and uh, is blooming uh, during the monsoon. So this area also is very good for birding. Uh, you can see here on top left a gray sibia, uh, but it's also famous for black francolin, crested bunting, uh, different species of minivet, a chestnut munia, uh, striated whiskered and strip sorted munia, uh, urina, sorry, yellow bellied fantail. Uh, the mountain tailor, tailor bird also can, can be found, beautiful uh, and, and very difficult to spot uh, tailor bird. Um, so it's, it's a very less known and, and, and very interesting place to birding. You can spin, spend at least uh, two or three days in. Uh, in this valley in Shoyu Valley to, to explore the different birding. And the good news is that some homestays who have understood the, the, uh, the importance of, um, of conservation and also the, the demand that there is because there's no other accommodation have started popping up on both sides, both in Shirui and near next to the Loktal Lake uh, with also the, the training of local guides. So now we're going to go uh, to the foothills of West Bengal. West Bengal hosting the, the biggest numbers of birds in India because of its diversity uh, with the Sundarban uh, in the south, the plain in the, in the middle and um, the Himalayan foothill on, in the north. So it's really diverse. We're just going to focus right now on the, on the foothills and on Sikkim if, uh, if you have some time. So here I'm just going to focus on three areas. Uh, Lat Pancha and Mahan Mahananda Wildlife Sanctuary, and then we'll go to Singalila National Park, and we'll finish in uh, Lava and uh, Neora Valley National Park. So Mahananda Wildlife Sanctuary uh, is quite famous for the rufous necked hornbill, uh, where it's nesting. So in the springtime, you can see uh, the male, which is here in front, uh, who is feeding the female. Uh, who has uh, clustered uh, herself into the um, to uh, so, um, protect the later to protect the chicks. This is um, like the oriental pied hornbill, quite easy to see also, the sultan tit, uh, the red headed trogon, the long tail broadbead, uh, the common green magpie, the Darjeeling woodpecker, uh, the Aegean emerald uh, cuckoo, chestnut wing cuckoo, chestnut headed tessia, black throated sunbird, dollar bird. Uh, so also, there's lots of home homestays who have come in the in the recent years because photographers have shown beautiful pictures of the um, rufous necked hornbill, and, uh, and and now lots of um, domestic travelers have come to to Mahananda and to Lat Pancha to to see those beautiful birds. Now let's move to uh, Lava and uh, the adjacent Neora Valley National Park. So this uh, Neora Valley National Park is just 40 kilometers from uh, Kalimpong. And there is also some accommodation, uh, very decent accommodation nearby. And it is, it's quite famous. It's one of the favorite sites for bird watching in, in the whole of uh, North Bengal with over 100 species of birds. So among them, you can uh, spot over there the rusty bellied shortwing, uh, but also the golden breasted fulveta, the rufous throated wren babbler, uh, scaly throated wren babbler, long beat wren babbler, rufous throated wren babbler, um, and also lots of different partridge, hill partridge, uh, Himalayan kutia, Silver Hill Messia, Broadbill Wren Babbler, uh, Broadbill Wabbler, sorry, Blue Fronted, Yellow Throated Field Beta, um, so Scarlet Finch also is, is, is present in this area. So this, you can also spend quite a few days in this, uh, in this area, and, and the guides are quite good over there. Now we move to Singalila National Park. 
which is close from Darjeeling. And it's um, it's the border, the natural border with uh, with Nepal. So the the um, Singalila is very famous for the red panda, and there's around 32 uh, red panda recorded in the area. So of course, uh, it's difficult to spot, but there are very good guides now, uh, locals who have been trained as guides. And if you spend, um, I say, a minimum of five six days over there you're almost guaranteed to, to, to see the red panda and you can go there all year round. Of course, the, the autumn will be the best, but otherwise uh, summer time and winter time can be also uh, beautiful. Um, apart from the red panda, there's lots of other mammals that can be found here, like the Himalayan black beard, clodid leopard, leopard, leopard cat, Himalayan zero, barking deer, uh, yellow throated marten, wild boar, uh, pangolin, pika, and many other um, Eastern Himalayan uh, mammal species. In terms of avifauna, there's more than 300 species of birds which have been recorded like the blood pheasant, a uh, very good spot for the blood pheasant, Sat satire tragopan, Kalish pheasant, both brown and fulvous parrot bill, uh, rufous ventiptit, uh, firetail maizonis, golden breasted fulveta, uh, many rose finch uh, species, bullfinch species, rain babblers, laughing thrushes, nuthatch, tree creepers, yuhinas, minivet, partridges, and many more. Um, focus uh, on um, different species, uh, sorry, different uh, um, places in uh, in Sikkim. First, uh, we did the Barthe Rhododendron Sanctuary, which is actually adjacent to the Singale National Park that we just discussed before. Then the Ravangla and Mayanam My My Wildlife Sanctuary. And uh, and then we'll, go, we'll move on to Yuxom, uh, Ketchao Pari and Peling. And finally, we'll go to Lachen and Gourdmar Lake, Lake, which in, unfortunately is uh, restricted to domestic travelers only. So first, you can see the Barce Rhododendron Sanctuary. This is uh, a picture taken in spring, uh, where uh, the Rhododendron are in full bloom. And uh, in the months of uh, September, uh, you can see sighting of huge gathering of frost finches, so just after the monsoon. Uh, among them, common rose finches, dark breasted rose finch, uh, white broad rose finch, and even the beautiful rose finch. It is one of the easiest places for the golden and white broad bush robin, also. And you can also look for other species uh, like mm, the spotted or the black faced or the white throated or even the scaly and chestnut crown laughing thrush. Different species of fulvetas, uh, spotted nutcracker, uh, some simtar babbler also, straight breasted and slender build. Um, black bird also is present, both, both white colored and gray winged black bird. Um, parrot bill, brown, gray, fulvus, and black throated parrot bill. Um, the beautiful fire capped teeth also is there. Um, white broad and lesser short wing. And regarding the pheasant, there is Kalish pheasant and satire tragopan. And you can also uh, have some chances to see red panda, which um, population is quite high in the sanctuary. Now we move to Ravangla and Mayanam Wildlife Sanctuary, which is storing just above uh, 22,000 20, meters high and go up to 3,100 meters. So the forest is a thick oak forest. And as you climb up, you can see different species of rhododendron. Uh, the sanctuary is also is uh, very famous for the satire tragopan, which is one of the rare species present that you can find in the eastern Himalaya. And but you can also uh, spot uh, rare species like fire tail maizonis. And also, it's a very good place for the brown wood owl, um, which has reported even in the daytime you can see, see them in, in some species, places of the forest. And in the lower part of the valley of uh, Tashiding, 
uh, it's a good spot for uh, red sultan tit, uh, puff throated babbler, and straight uh, spider hunter. In the nearby area of Peling, uh, Ketcheopari, and Yuxom, uh, you will find some, uh, some beautiful um, uh, species. You can see this beautiful uh, holy lake. Uh, the legends say about this lake that not a single leaf uh, will fall uh, on the lake, and that if it happens, one bird will come and pick it up. So it's very close from Peling, uh, which is about uh, 20 kilometers from uh, the town of Kuzing, which I was talking just, just before. And it's a very uh, good place for the rusty chicked simtar babbler but also for the scaly loafing thrush, the red-faced laucicla, fire-tail maizornis, scarlet finch, but also Himalayan kutia, black-headed tribe babbler, scaly breasted run babbler, uh, spotted run babbler, and many more. And I will finally uh, finish this, um, this presentation uh, with Lachen and the Guru Dongmar Lake, where we, you will mainly find high, uh, high, high altitude species. Unfortunately, uh, on foreigners are not allowed in this area. So only domestic travelers can, can enjoy the beauty of, of, of the lake and, and, uh, and above. So this area of uh, North, North Sikkim, uh, it's uh, very uh, dry and high altitude uh, plateau. So you will see species for like a snow pigeon, but also blood pheasants, Himalayan monal, uh, white throated dipper, which is a bird which is uh, diving in uh, very cold water to, to, to find some insects, uh, spocked wing uh, grobeck, white wing grobeck as well. And there has been some record of Tibetan, uh, Tibetan snowcock uh, around the lake. Uh, and there is also some uh, some sp some species like the ground tit uh, with the his long beak to to search in the ground. In terms of mammals, also you will find the kyong. Um, so the local name is kyong is a Tibetan wild ass, but you can also encounter Tibet Tibetan antelope, uh, Tibetan gazelle, Himalayan cerro, uh, Tibetan argali, and even the wonderful. And there's been also some beautiful pictures recently of the tip and sand fox. Okay, so I think we are done. Thank you so much for, for listening to this, uh, to this presentation. Uh, yeah, thank you, Lawrence. I think it was a very, um, you know, uh, knowledgeable session. And thank you so much for your, uh, you know, in-depth knowledge which you shared with us.